Hi, welcome to Pauline Young's channel. If you like our videos, please click the like and the subscribe button. Also, please comment at below to submit your area of interest. In this video, as requested by our viewers, we will cover the 10-year Treasury yields impact on the stock markets and to see who are the winners and the losers should the yields rise consistently. The Dow Jones Industrial Average lost almost 559 points or minus 1.75% on Thursday along with the global stock market indices plunges. The S&P 500 fell 2.5% its worst day in the nearly a month after touching an all-time high in February 12. The Nasdaq Composite Index, which is weighted heavily towards technology companies, lost 6% from its peak of 14,000 on February 16. The last severe correction for the Nasdaq was 10% correction in October 2020. What caused this jittery of the stock market? There are many reasons for this. One of the reasons was the 10-year Treasury yield. 10-year Treasury yield, which is closely tied to 30-year mortgage rates and other consumer loans, topped 1.5% on Thursday, February 25th, its highest level on more than a year. Well, these rising rates means that the investor have to think about the potential effects on the higher yields on their mortgages and their car loans, which means higher cost of borrowing. Hence, the question is, what is pushing the yields higher? In general, price of bonds and yields have inverse relationship. So when the demand for bond is low, it will depress the price and pushes up the yields. When the economy is opening up due to mass vaccination, investors feel that the stock market should perform well this year and they demand less of the bonds but more of the stocks. Hence, the lower demand for bonds will push the yields up. In other words, bond yield also tends to signal investors' confidence. When confidence is high, prices for the 10-year treasury drops and yields rise. As rising bond yields typically signal that investors are hoping for more economic growth in the future, but they can also indicate that a potential spike in inflation is just around the corner. The potential of higher inflation means that the Fed will raise interest rates soon, and we know higher interest rate is bad for the stock market. So that is why we saw investors to rotate away from the technology companies which thrived in a stay-at-home economy and up instead towards the companies poised to benefit from the lockdown's ending. Some investors worry that an increase in the bond yields and longer-term interest rates will end the market's run of steady gains. Remember, stocks have rebounded to a record high level followed by a historic plunge last spring. These gains could be threatening because higher yields make it more expensive to borrow money, and that tends to slow down economic growth, which could be bad for the stocks. But what did the Fed say? Fed Chairman Jerome Powell downplays concern this week about the potentially higher inflation and signal that the central bank sees no need to alter its ultra-low rate policies for the foreseeable future. The Fed projects that the inflation will remain at or below the central bank's rate of 2% target through 2023. During the recent Fed meeting, Jerome Powell says economy is a long way from the Fed's goals and central bank has no plans to raise interest rates or reduce bond purchases. So, should you fear of higher yields? Well, inflation gains over the past year have remained modest. Economic disruption from the pandemic has continued to suppress demand and has kept inflation at extremely low levels. That has helped the Federal Reserve keep interest rates at record low levels in an effort to help lift the economy out of the recession. Even before the pandemic, inflation over the past decade has remained muted, with annual price gains remaining well below the Federal's 2% of target. If rates are rising because the economic growth outlook is picking up, higher interest rates shouldn't be a risk for the stock market. In our views, unless there is a sustained inflation surge due to crude oil prices, rising bond yields will have a minor impact on the stock market. Bond yields are rising right now because the market is pricing in the reopening of the economy for the post-COVID-19 world and accelerating economic growth. Who will be the losers when the 10-year yield spike? The rise in the yields does have implication for the stock market and could make shares of companies with higher valuations less attractive. Those types of stocks tend to be technology companies 
who are priced typically for growth and not for a steady return of dividends like the consumer stables, utilities and real estate companies. And who are the winners? Rising rates tend to be favorable for more cyclical sectors or companies where businesses and stock prices tend to follow the business cycle. Those include sectors like consumer discretionary, energy, financials, industrials and healthcare. Bank stocks, which were hurt by lower interest rates last year, would see higher profits if interest rates keep rising. And while the technology sector would be at risk for declines, it yields rose due to higher inflation and banking sectors rising free cash flow and recurring revenue streams would provide protection. Finally, at the end of the day, the concern for the investors are, can yields and the long-term rates rise too much before they begin to become a risk for the stocks? In theory, yes, but typically only if a rise in the rates begins to choke off economic growth. Hence, rising yields will likely inject more volatility into the financial markets as investors debate when the Fed will be forced to tighten monetary policy, though that doesn't appear to be anytime soon. Despite conventional thinking that rising long-term rates are bad for stocks, historical data show that the broad S&P 500 has actually posted strong returns. The S&P 500 has averaged an annualized total return of 13% and an increase of 81% of the time during the rising rates period, which is 13 out of 16, according to a data from Trust Advisory Services. The above analysis is for information purpose and we do not initiate a buy call or a sell call. At the point of recording, we do not hold any of the stocks mentioned in this video. Thank you.